Pratip has a question. Can we assume play of desires in oneness by inference? And just below it in duality, desires appear. Although no knowledge is possible in oneness, the play of desires is not an inference. It is our direct experience. Now, to say that play of desires is happening in oneness or below it is meaningless because everything is happening in oneness and everything appears in duality. The desires are aborted at the level of mind in duality. Yes, it is happening totally in the illusion because that which aborts the desires is also an illusion. The, it is not correct to say that the desire is aborted. We say that the action is aborted because the desire is already there. If it is detected by the intellect, the desire is already there. Now, in an unaware person, the desire will result in an action, more or less. In the aware person, the desire is not really aborted, it is postponed. Today I won't do it. This is not important to do today. It is unnecessary to do. As soon as the awareness is there, these thoughts replace the thoughts of the desire generated by the desire. It is always postponed. So what is happening at the level of oneness is there is a potential, there is a possibility of these desires to appear and they keep appearing. Please note my words, they keep appearing, never stop. Because that which never starts, never stops. So endless, endless desires. The, if you try to find out the source of the desires, it is the vibration itself. The primordial vibration is the primordial desire of the existence. If there is no vibration in the existence, there won't be any illusion, there won't be any manifestation, nothing will appear. So even in oneness we can assume the latent desires are there. They are manifested as thoughts in a human being. Actually they are being manifested in everything. When the seed grows into a sapling, a plant, it is nothing but the desire. When the moon is orbiting the earth, nothing but desire. So ancient people saw this and they called it the will. Some people, religious people, they call it the will of God. And in Tantra we call it the desire of the Devi. Devi is nothing but desire. So it is manifested at various levels and it will never go away. To think that I can abort a desire by simply becoming aware is a mistake. I can abort the action. Yes, that is possible. But there are consequences. This abortion of the action also is an action and therefore it has consequences. These consequences are not in our control. The action is in our control. Everybody knows from the BG. BG says this, that don't worry about the consequences. Worry about what you do. That's all is in our control. The appearance of the desire is not in our control. And the consequences are not in our control. That's why we say it's a play. What is awareness doing is sequencing the desires. What do we want? Not suppression of the desire. We want resequencing. That which is unnecessary, that which is, you see, imposed from outside, which is not my allocation for this life, must be postponed. That which is necessary is my allocation, must be done. That desire must be fulfilled. Not by hook or crook. <laughs> In an intelligent way so that we can avoid the consequences as much as possible. Desire is generated at the non-physical level, so it is possible to fulfill it there. But remember that there will be endless numbers, endless num amount of it. They are hidden in the fabric of oneness. Actually, there is nothing else in oneness except this will, except this desire. The vibration is the desire. It has taken many forms. All the experience can be seen as experience of desiring, not my desire. Obviously there is no me, so there is no my desire. It is the desire of the whole, we can say, or nobody's desire, nobody's desire. And this dance is there. So yes, it may look like that there is a will of me, free will, you can say choice, he's using the word choice, and I have a choice. But we know there is no me. This choice is also an illusion, like he said. But the, this choice is also of the Devi. The choice is also of the oneness, the existence. It is not really a choice. It is simply a loop. There is a delay. That's all. 
something is seen as more important than that is chosen automatically and continues it is very simple it is very mechanical thing because it's simply vibration it gives an illusion that there is something which is choosing and because of the identification an ordinary ignorant person will say i chose i became aware and then i chose the desire no nothing like this happens so hopefully that answers the question everything can be seen as a desire even the tiniest moment in the existence is nothing but a desire it has become very very complicated and uh, sophisticated in case of humans and there is identification with it added drama with it and uh, this whole evolution is a desire actually whole evolution is a desire and the only useful desire that we have <laughs> in the whole existence is to know my true nature one out of infinite rest are useless one is most important from the point of view of uh, the oneness everything is happening perfectly it will say i am perfect everything is happening perfect that is also our direct experience if the if the human factor is introduced then yes some things should not happen <laughs> but the illusion does not care the maya devi does not care it just goes on and on and on so it is only our ignorance that is causing misery and happiness and all everything is actually as good as it should be gram has some comment well i don't read all this text you see but i'll guess for you that uh, this this comes from another tradition actually it's totally different when we say will obviously it is not the individual will that must that thing must be clear and just like i was saying that day that when we think we when we see things moving when there is movement when there is change we say that there is will behind it and the will is not individual it is universal will and this uh, thing yeah it's not our will so this change is seen as a will of something that is how our mind knows it that is how our our intellect responds to it as if it is being done willfully because it looks like there is a telios which means there is a end to it it is happening for some reason it looks like there it looks like there is a direction to the universe and this coat is expressing this thing so she is the universe yes she has her own will and she is expressing that will what are we humans by product of <laughs> this thing we are means we are puppets in this play path of energies where the devi is supreme yes it sounds like telios yes so exactly like that it is saying the same thing which i keep saying is not my will thy will same thing in the bible the problem is people become uh, content with this thing when these teachings are given oh not my will so i will not do anything and today will just sit here and pray and sing it's one thing to surrender and another thing to obey the will do this you see surrender does not mean that you sit down and do nothing obey the will now when i say these things people don't like it so we don't say it for us on the path of knowledge you need to fulfill your prarabdha nothing else you see. don't do anything else that is what i say and when that is told in the ordinary language it is like fulfill all your pending desires get out of here don't come back hopefully everybody understands progress don't come back here hold this intention strong intention in you for spiritual progress let devi do whatever she wants you say you will say what a disaster it's a mixture of all the paths now like i said you cannot escape these things you see what is path of knowledge it is the pure extract of spirituality then there is you know left over which is the pile of other paths pick something <laughs> from that left over my favorite is tantric path everybody knows anybody who is intellectual won't be able to surrender won't be able to be devoted and intellectual people are very lazy they don't do the kriya they don't do, do the yoga asana and all the pranayam no the mind is you know intellect is dominating so what is more appealing the tantra which is of the mental kind 
they won't even go to the rivers and temples <laughs> and the cemeteries no, no no we don't want all the trouble we want to sit peacefully in our chair drink coffee and read some book and music and then we want to dwell on the door of the knock the door of the devi higher layers so that is what i call the independent tantra those who are interested should take it up those who want guidance there will be a little bit of guidance not much you see it is all present in the hindi videos but <laughs> there is nothing in english so far so more questions yogendra is asking will the desire not to come back become bondage or it's the desire of brahman that will just be obeying well one thing is that before the guru tells you you don't even know what is there whether to come back or not so you see it's not a bondage it becomes an order from the guru don't come back then you will say no i am bound by it no no it is your will you have chosen your guru and you are not obeying that wish so it is for your own good that's why the guru told you but uh, the brahman is manifesting through the guru you see but when you are born there is no bondage like this to not to come back actually it is reverse you want to come back when you are born there is a desire to come back it is reverse so the guru reverses reverses it again you see in the hopes that he will come back only for two or three times the guru is not so hopeful you see so <laughs> when i tell you don't come back what i'm expecting is you see instead of 50 lifetimes he will be back only for five lifetimes and this cannot become a bondage yes you if you not experience the higher dimension of spirituality then it may look like you know why he is sending me why he is kicking me out of this heavenly place called earth then it may look like oh no i need to do it so but don't worry if you are not ready for it then the guru is not even going to tell you all these things he will only tell you to do the good deeds good actions that's all you will be told and if you are told like this you can assume that i need to progress a lot i am at the bottom <laughs> but as soon as the guru tells you don't come back uh, he has seen some progress it feels very bad when i uh, there are some people i tell them directly that you will be back for 10 lifetimes and they feel very bad but then i tell them don't worry i'll be with you <laughs> okay okay then i'm coming you just be with me and don't worry the guru never goes away because it is the guru field that is manifested your connection is with the guru field not with the person who is calling himself as guru that is totally unimportant essential thing is connect to the guru field set up your intention set up your alarm and stop worrying about coming back and you no know, if there is a command don't come back then it it has already happened now stop worrying about it